it's Kim. Today I'm bringing you a process video using the uniquely creative Tapestry of Time collection. I am using two pieces of this pattern paper from the collection that has the like printed distressed photo area already made on it and I thought I would use that to create a dimensional mat below my photos of which I'm doing um, a photo of my father-in-law, sister-in-law and my husband. Um, so I'm using two sheets of this paper, which comes in the collection pack and you can see what I'm doing is I have fussy cut out all around that piece out of one of the pattern papers. And now I'm cutting around the wings of the butterfly so that they will pop up. I have gone around all the bits of the stamps as well. So they're all the little, um, divots around the stamps. I've fussy cut the whole lot. And then what I will do is layer that up, um, which you'll see in a moment. And I'm also, which I don't do very often, I'm actually inking on this layout because I really think it suits this vintagey sort of range. Um, so there's some tickets that are available in this uniquely creative collection. And these are the vintage tickets, but I'm just making them more vintage by inking them um, with a distress ink. And then I am going to actually wet them and crumple them as well and let them dry quite crumpled. So just making sure I've got them fully inked. I'm just going to add a little bit of a darker ink. So I think the first one is linen and the second one is old photo, I believe, or something to that effect. So I'm just spraying them now and I'm distressing some of that ink. adding a little bit more ink and then I'm crumpling them. So when they dry, they actually will dry crumpled, but they dry really firm. The paper rehardens. So it goes really soft so you can squish it up easy once it's wet. Um, but once it dries, it goes, the paper goes really hard again. Um, and so you get a really dimensional finish to your ephemera item if you do this. Um, and I think it makes the tickets look really nice and old without being overly grungy. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm cutting, so there's a few cut apart sheets in this collection and I'm just cutting various tags. So a few tags now, and then I'm also going to cut various other pieces, which I'll include, um, around the photo, um, in and under that extra piece that I've cut out. Um, and you will see that. So I'm just punching the holes with my crocodile, inking the edges lightly of those. And I'm just inking around the edge of the piece that I fussy cut out initially and around the butterfly wings just so that it all matches in. So I'm trying at the moment to see what else I need to layer in. So the tags are going to go on the right hand side and I'll just tuck them in under that um, second layer of that background paper. So by building, by using two pieces of patterned paper and cutting out elements from one of them and layering it on top, you get a real dimensional effect while still leveraging off the pieces that hang out around it. So I didn't cut out like the big distressed piece at the bottom. And so that's going to look like a bottom layer. And then the photo mounting bit will pop up above that once I attach it in. And you'll see that as this layout develops. So I'm just cutting out various um, bits and pieces from these cut apart sheets. And I'm going to ink the edges of all of them. And then I'll have them all available. I don't end up using everything. Um, but I did cut out what I thought I might use, um, ready to go. So it's all ink. So when it comes to actually putting the layout together, I've got everything ready to go. So lots of fussy cutting. I wish in real life it happened this quickly, but it doesn't. So I've got a couple of extra butterflies there that match in with the butterfly on the photo mount piece. And I am going to create a trio of those. Um, on the actual printed paper, it looks like there's thread under and below the butterfly. So I'm going to do that same thing with sewing thread for the other two butterflies that I've cut out. So there's um, a few more like ledger papers and library cards and things like that in the collection, which I have cut out. And then these pieces that I'm pulling out now are actually from the ephemera pack that comes with the collection. So I've got some little um, like film um, negative frames or slide frames, which I'm using. Um, so I've got some of those to go up into with the photo and then I'm going to use that as the basis 
one of those also as the bases for a cluster that will be at the bottom right hand corner of the page which will just help balance out that uh, photo cluster at the top of the page. So along the selvage strip on this paper there is um, a scallop so I'm just I've cut that selvage strip off and now I'm fussy cutting around the scallop and I'm actually going to use that on that cluster at the bottom of the page. So um, there's lots of little bits that you can cut out in these collections which makes them really um, useful. Lots of little things um, and that adds detail to your clusters. So I'm just now inking the edges of that again so everything ties in. So you can see there that I've got a big pile of ephemera that I've cut out that I've all inked that's ready to go just to the right of the layout. Um, now I'm just cutting off the salvage strip off the bottom of this paper. Always good to do before you make the layout, reminding myself because I am notorious for not doing that. Um, and now I'm ready to go with starting to build the layout. So actually on this salvage strip that I just cut off, on the other side of it, there was a really nice pattern. So I've actually stuck the salvage strip back onto the bottom of the page. And now I'm starting to build that cluster. The first item there is the... Uh, negative uh, uh, case or frame and then that uh, fussy cut piece of scalloping and then some various tickets and little words and stuff which I'm sticking down there and then I'm also going to add um, one of the butterflies down there so just they're all just going over each other again it's just creating layers which gives interest so happy with that, but the butterfly will come later, I believe. So now I'm just building some foam up onto the back of this piece, that the large piece that I cut out. Um, and I'm just using, for anybody that watches my videos, you know that I'm a fan. This is Kitty's Craft Foam. Um, it's adhesive on one side. So I just use that and then stick, um, stick the rest of it down with wet glue. So I just build that up so I've got a nice solid layer because I'm going to put more pieces on that and my photo. So I want it nice and firm to build up on. And I'm just looking at the various items now that I'm going to stick underneath the um, layered piece, uh, the photo piece. Now, because I've cut the butterfly's wings on the top piece and I'm gonna pop them up, you would actually see the tickets rather than the butterfly underneath. So I'm just cutting the ends off those tickets and I am gonna use some of those doing the layers, more layers around the photo. So I'm just trying this out, decided they're still sticking out too far, chopping them off a bit more. Um, one of them is still sticking out too far. So I'm cutting that back down and now I'm just going to stick them down with wet glue. Make sure they're nice and firmly attached. And that piece is going to go over there like that. Now I'm just looking at what other pieces I might stick down. And I've decided there's um, a really cute little, um, what do you call it, um, temp, uh, stencil in this in this collection as well um, and it's like stitches so I'm just adding some of that with the ink that I've used to do around um, the various pieces and you can't see it here very clearly but you can see it um, on the close-up photos at the end of the film um, so this page is being done for embellish it um, my local scrapbooking shop um, I actually went over the edge of the stencil a bit there but because it's distress ink I just used a bit of water and some paper towel to clean that up and now I'm just adding a little bit of the um, stenciling down the bottom as well to make it a bit easier. I have put a piece of scrap paper. You'll see I'm holding it there just so that I don't go through onto the um, uh, bottom of the layout. And now back up to the top. So it is just a subtle touch, but again, those layers, so having various elements, the more layers you have, the more interest there is. So I've put a few pieces of ephemera around the photo so that there's layers underneath the photo, and now I'm sticking those down. So some of those are um, library cards and stuff that I cut out of the cut apart sheets. I think I also used some of the ends of those um, labels that I had cut down that are on the right side of the layout. So you're just using everything because, and it doesn't really matter because there's like any little bits sticking out on the side of the photo. So yeah, this is one of those cut off um, pieces of the other tags on the other side. And it's just to give um, some a frame around the photo. Um, and I'm also cutting out a piece here 
and I'm going to distress the edges of that and that's actually going to sit at the bottom so it doesn't go the whole way around the photo it's just going to sit on the bottom sort of two-thirds and across the bottom of the photo so some wet glue holds that down again just more interest more dimension and inking the edges of all of that so it ties in um, and it is going to sit there so it will sit mostly on that piece that we cut out that we've now popped up but some of it will hang off the edge so I've used another one of those film frames I think it was a bit that I had left oh no not the bit I had left so I've used another one um, of those film frames onto the left of that photo cluster um, and I'm just adding some more tickets and stuff so it really is just as I say layers and interest and I'm going to put foam so it pops this up. So the whole layout's only got the two layers of foam. So it's not that dimensional. If you don't like dimension, you don't have to put this second layer. But I really would say to put it under that piece that you fussy cut out. Otherwise, there's probably no point of doing the fussy cutting. Um, but it's great because it means you can tuck all those bits underneath it. that So you can add to the dimension and, and the look. So you can see here I'm just using black sewing thread. And as I said, when you look closer, the big butterfly up next to the photo has um, thread printed that comes out under it. So I'm just imitating that by using black sewing thread and I've stuck a butterfly over it. And I've just put a little bit of glue on the tails of that thread so I can um, move it attach it along behind so it hangs out behind the butterfly and now it, I'm putting a few more little fussy cut bits along the bottom edge of that piece and so I'm just having a fiddle to see where I'm going to put things and then once I'm happy with it I'll start sticking it down okay so I've got various bits of ephemera there Oh, these are the tickets that I made at the start. So they're dry now. Uh, well, they were a little bit damp, so I just hit them with the heat gun to make sure they were completely dry before I stuck them into the layout. I'm just holding them in place with my um, cutting tool so that I don't burn my fingers. But once they're dry, um, they are so firm but really dimensional. So I'm just sticking a couple of those tickets in at the top of the photo underneath. So they're underneath that large piece that we fussy cut out that's the benefit of having fussy cut that because you really can tick stick so much more so you're not solely dependent upon what was printed on the page by cutting it out and layering it on top you can add extra pieces so I've added um, tags the tickets and these little labely pieces in addition to what was already printed on the page so it means you can make the page more your own and now I'm just sticking this down um, with the wet glue if you hold it in place and just till it grabs then it will stick there firmly and I'm putting my photo in place now I've made sure that the wing of the butterfly that I fussy cut out is actually overlapping over the photo so it looks like the butterfly is sitting there so I'm just using my T-square ruler to make sure my photo is straight. Sometimes it can be a bit hard to work out because when you've got um, pieces framed around it that aren't straight, what you're looking for is to make sure not that you're not interested in whether your frame is straight, you're interested in whether your photo is straight. So you get that. I'm, and I played with a few more ephemera pieces to go in that bottom corner, but I decided that it didn't need it on that piece. But I am going to stick... A journaling spot there so I can add some journaling about the photo to this layout and then this is the title which is one of the die cut pieces and it says good times so it was perfect because this was we were out for dinner with the family um, and now I am I think sticking the third of the butterflies down I am in that um, bottom left corner of the photo and next to the title so it's going to draw attention to your title by putting the butterfly embellishment at the start of the title and you can see that with the three butterflies you've got one at the top right of the photo one at the bottom left of the photo and next to the title and then one down the bottom so of the layout so it makes your eye move like they're, they're a quite eye-catching feature so it means that your eye moves around the layout the butterflies help direct you around and they draw attention to the main elements being the photo and the title 
And I think that is getting pretty close. I think I'm going to stick some foam tape underneath the butterfly's wing to make sure that it um, stays in place and remains popped up. Yep, so just putting a little bit of foam um, under there. So I am using um, strips of white double-sided foam here. So when I do spots that are more visible, I use my white double-sided foam. Otherwise, I use my um, cheaper craft foam. Of course, you can use double-sided foam tape or chipboard pieces or whatever to give dimension. So I'm just add, adding my journaling about when the photo was taken and who's in it, which is really important because obviously um, in time to come, people won't know who these people in the photo are. So it's great to have that all documented. Um, and I am adding some splatters of black ink. I'm just using a pipette and some black acrylic ink and I'm adding some big splotches and that creates a line that draws your eye further down the page. So from the photo down to the embellishment cluster at the bottom. And then it is all done. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, there's some close-up photos to come. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you press like. And if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so that you know when that I have more videos available. And I shall talk to you again soon. Bye.